try and get past these losers. Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. I'm not sure that making the video today is a brilliant idea. It's bloody cold, even though it might not look it. And there's ice everywhere, even in some of the parts of the road that are in the sunshine. Oh, what the hell, I can't stay indoors all Christmas. Try and get past these losers. So the subject of the video today is social media. It's something I've been um, kind of inspired to talk about because of some other videos I've seen on YouTube actually, I'll link them in the comments. But I recently gave up social media, specifically Facebook. Get out the way you losers. And I feel amazing for it. I was probably never like a hardcore sort of Facebooker, but even if you're not a prolific poster, I think a lot of people would surprise themselves once they actually add up how many seconds of their life they spend either checking Facebook, thinking about Facebook, thinking about how they could talk about the events in their lives on Facebook taking pictures, videos, even doing things solely for the purpose of seeing how they look on Facebook. I think that social media, I don't really do Twitter or Instagram or the rest, but Facebook is bad enough for me. But social media, I think, is an incredibly destructive force in many people's lives, especially for many users who are probably much more prolific than even I am. And I, this might sound a bit um, alarmist. I've got a feeling in 20 or 30 years time, social media is gonna be viewed similar to smoking and drinking. I saw a great video by a guy who, I'll, his name escapes me, I'll, I'll link in the comments about, they're called millennials, these people that have kind of grew up in the late 90s, early 2000s, and what the issues for them are, why some of them are struggling. And a big finger was pointed at social media. And it's a huge pressure on the brain, having to constantly, having this, this oblong in your pocket, that is constantly crying out for your attention, constantly begging you to switch it on. And without you realizing it, a lot of your kind of background processing in your brain is probably dedicated to thinking about social media all the time you're awake. And I've had a lot going on in my life this year, which has caused a lot of stress and pressure, which I'm working through. But without realizing it, I think one of the major contributors to this has been social media. The irony is I was kind of turning to social media to kind of help me cope with stress. But to sum up, the case for those of you that haven't seen these other videos or read about it. It's all about a hormone called dopamine. And I'm no biologist or even psychologist, but the gist of it seems to be that dopamine is the chemical in our brain that rewards us and encourages us to achieve in life. So when you achieve something, you get a girlfriend, you know, 
or you do well at business or you do some exercise or you win at sport, your brain rewards you with a rush of dopamine. And it's kind of our, it kind of encourages our body to create energy, it encourages our minds to think and to work hard, all to get this reward of this chemical dopamine. But in the modern world, we've manufactured lots of ways to get this reward without doing little to no work at all. You could eat a sugary sweet, you could eat a chocolate, you could drink an energy drink, you could drink a coffee, you could play a computer game. All of these things reward you with this dopamine and quite often the only effort you actually have to expend is to press a button or to walk into the kitchen. And social media works on a very sim similar principle. It's designed to be as addictive, whoops, I'm supposed to be going down here, as addictive as possible. Because the more time you spend on Facebook is the more time you're looking at adverts, which means the more money that the corporations make and that Facebook makes. So it's in Facebook's business interest to get you as hooked and addicted on it as they possibly can. I'm going to pop into the bank and I'll start this up again in a second. Okay, as I was saying, yeah, dopamine, life and social media. So every time on Facebook you get a little red notification of a message or something, or a like, your brain thinks, way, somebody likes me, somebody's thinking of me, I'm a good person, I'm a successful person. And it kind of rewards you with this small hit of dopamine. But it keeps you hooked. And it means you want more and more and more. And because it's so easy to get dopamine this way, it means that you're much less likely to bother seeking it in other ways. Like by doing difficult work, by thinking creatively, by pushing yourself, by having a conversation with someone by focusing on the world around you. And that's why heavy users of social media, so I'm trying not to get killed here, um, heavy users of social media and some drugs and things, they have trouble sleeping, they don't really focus on what's going on around them, they have very short attention spans. And I certainly found, hang on, this year especially, I basically had no attention span at all. I couldn't even read, I couldn't read a book. I haven't read a book for years because I just can't concentrate on it enough. I couldn't even read a magazine article properly. Nice monster there. It got to the point I couldn't even watch a film. And even a TV episode was hard to focus on because I'd just be wanting to look at my phone the whole way through. And this wasn't just Facebook, by the way. This is like news websites, forums, basically anything to distract myself from what's going on around me. Can I overtake here? Let's do it. And I don't think it was just social media, there's other hard stuff going on as well, but basically the day, one day, I just thought, right, that's it, deactivate Facebook account. And they try as hard as they can to stop you deactivating it. They try and make you input, like, the reason why, and then <coughs> give you loads of alternatives and excuses of not to actually leave. But, yeah, you can battle through that, shut your account down temporarily. You can't actually delete your account. In the days and weeks since quitting, I feel like I'm like a different person. I've got more energy, I can concentrate, I've finished reading a book. It's amazing. And I, okay, I also 
quit my job which was stressing me out as well which probably added to it but I think social media has a big part to play suddenly I can concentrate again I just feel happier as well and I'm actually noticing all the time little extra things that kind of prove to me how addictive social media was an example just the other day George Michael died I've got no real interest in George Michael I don't know much about him some of his songs are all right not really my sort of thing but I've got nothing against the guy and I had this strange urge inside me and I it took me a, a few minutes to pinpoint what it was and I realized I had like an urge to say something about it to social media even though I hadn't been on for nearly two weeks so I'd strongly advise Giving, uh, giving it a try. Take a break. <laughs> I don't know if I'll go back or not. It was very useful for some things. I'm trying to promote my book. I'm trying to promote my YouTube channel. Facebook's kind of useful for that. But to be honest, I think the, posit the negatives outweigh the positives. Only time will tell. Anyway, hope you can hear me over this wind, riding a naked bike on the motorway in the middle of winter. <coughs> oh, shit, I better slow down. Uh, yeah, isn't the best for vlogging. But if you've got any thoughts on what I've said, put a comment below. I'll also put a link to some of the videos that have influenced me. Hope you found this interesting, and I'll see you next time. that sunset. Beautiful. Ah, I can't see fucking anything. <laughs> I can't actually see like a meter in front of me. Fucking hell. I should have worn sunglasses. <laughs> Beautiful sunset though. And a lovely English pub with which to enjoy it.